Hey everybody, Michael Crump here, back again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4 homebrew news and much, much more. Today, I wanted to take a look at this tool and it's called Internal Package Installer. Now, what this tool does is, is that if you have packages that's located on your internal hard drive in your slash data folder, it will automatically install those for you. Now, you do have to run the application in order to install it, but I found that this is super helpful, especially with the way some of the new app developers are doing their updates. Let's take a look at this right now. So I went ahead and I've already described a bit in detail about what this package is, but basically it states the kind of the same thing here. Again, this is firmware agnostic, so this will work on whatever firmware that you're currently running. Let's go to the releases here, and we're going to just download this PKG file, which is listed in the 01.01 .01 release. And once this has been downloaded, we just need to transfer this over via USB or FTP. In my instance, I'm going to use FTP. So let's take a quick peek at that. Okay, so on my PlayStation 4, I have went ahead and I have inserted a USB stick. And then I've just navigated out to mount USB. And then on my local hard drive, I simply have the package file that we just downloaded just a moment ago. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to simply drag and drop that package file from my local hard disk all the way back over to my USB stick. Okay, and that's done. So let's jump over to the PlayStation 4. Okay, over on the PlayStation 4, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into PS4 Explorer. And once that is loaded up, Let's go to our USB drive, and there is the file that I want to install. We're just going to press X on this, and then X again, and it's added to our downloads, and then in just a second, it will be installed. Okay. Okay, so on the PS4 here, I do not have the Homebrew Store installed. And so what I'm going to do is that since it's already on my USB drive, I'm just going to simply copy that into the data folder where you can see an example of how to work with this. So let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to go into our USB drive here. And there is the Homebrew Store. We're going to hit Triangle. And then we're going to go down to Copy. And now we're going to press the R3 button and go back into data. And now triangle again and then just paste. And so just keep in mind that the data folder that I'm referring to here, this is created and crafted automatically whenever you initialize a PlayStation 4. So you should have this folder slash data. And here is where you could start copying those package files. Okay, let's go ahead and run it. And what we should see is we should see that automatically being added to our downloads and then being ready to use. Okay, great. So the homebrew store has been installed. And again, the scenario here is, is that you may have multiple package files that you want to put inside of that slash data folder to install. And it will just simply install them all versus going through and doing it one by one. You could also FTP packages directly to that folder. And again, they would install as long as you go in and you click on the IPI app. And so if you're wondering what happens if you go ahead and you rerun the internal package installer after it just installed something, well, here's what it does. So let's go back into the internal package installer. And you'll see here, it just simply says cannot install. And the reason that it can install is because that package already exists onto your computer. So a word of caution here is, is that you may want to clean out the slash data folder from time to time. There isn't an option in the application to do that right now, but maybe that could be something that could be implemented later on. Another thing that is interesting is, is that some app developers are starting to use the slash data folder in order to put some of their updates or their updated packages. Let's look at an example of an app developer doing this right now, and that's just going to be the Apollo Save Tool. 
So let's go over to the Apollo Save Tool. Okay, in the Apollo Tool, we're going to simply go down to where it says Information, and we are on version 0 0.70. Let's go ahead and let's run this application, and it should prompt us to update it. Okay, new version available. Download the update. We're going to go yes on this. And here it does say the update was downloaded to the slash data slash Apollo dash PS4 dot PKG. So you can go ahead and press OK on this and then Apollo will launch as it normally does. And keep in mind that it did not install the patch. All that it simply did was it downloaded it to the slash data folder and they are expecting you to kind of go out and then to run it. Okay, and we can see here in this Apollo tool is, is that if we went ahead and we tried to run this thing again, it still doesn't have a clue that that package or that the latest version of the application has already been downloaded. So it asks you to do that again. So this is something that hopefully a lot of the developers of these tools get a little bit better at, especially in regards to determining if the latest version is actually already on the system and even kicking off an installer. So I'm gonna close this application. Once I close the application, I'm just gonna go down to where it says delete, and then I'm gonna hit okay here. And now I'm just gonna run the internal package installer again. And now it should state, we can't install the store because it's already on there, but the Apollo save tool, we can install that one because that is no longer on the system. So here we are, we're no longer getting those extra prompts to upgrade, and all we had to do was just simply run an application. Okay, so that is it for this one. I wanted to keep this one super short and sweet, where at least I could show you this tool. I believe this tool will be very helpful, especially in those regards where you've got multiple packages. You wanna install those multiple packages. You don't wanna do it one by one, or if more app developers start to utilize the slash data folder for their updates to their applications. Just remember that you will need to, from time to time, to go into that slash data folder and clean it out unless you have a ton of additional hard drive space. And this is especially true if you're putting very big games in that data folder. So maybe 50 gigabyte games. You don't want that 50 gigabyte package just sitting out there in that data folder, eating up hard drive space. So just keep that in mind. With that being said, I hope this video helps. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!